Welcome back to another episode of Sigma's video how-to series. In this video, we'll be going over how to build advanced pivot tables by using unions to combine multiple pivot tables together. This week's video brought to you by me, Chandler Phelps, from the technical support team. Many executive dashboards include large pivot tables which show a variety of metrics split across multiple periods and categories. By default, Sigma's pivot tables show every metric split by the same periods and categories. However, some executive dashboards require that some metrics be split into different periods and categories from the rest. We can accomplish this in Sigma by unioning multiple pivot tables together into a single, more complex pivot table. For our first step, we'll need to create two or more pivot tables that are mapped to each other to be unioned. We'll call these our component pivots. These component pivots need to be identical across either the vertical dimension, pivot rows, or the horizontal dimension, pivot columns, and similar enough across the remaining dimension for columns to be mapped one-to-one -one in the union. Note that when I say column, I'm always referring to columns as they are listed here in the Element Properties menu on the left, and as they appear in the underlying table of the pivot. Formulas, joins, and unions in Sigma pivot tables work off of these columns, rather than the columns as they appear on the pivot which are always referred to as pivot columns specifically instead. To be properly mapped, the component pivots must meet all of the following conditions. For one of either pivot rows or pivot columns, all component pivots must have a set of columns that are each identical across pivots. By identical, I mean that each of these columns must have the same name, the same data type, and must contain the same set of distinct values across pivots. Preferably, they should be the same column from the same data source. In this example, both of my pivots have store region as their pivot columns. For the remainder of either pivot rows or pivot columns, each pivot must have a set of columns that are each similar across all pivots. By similar, I mean that each column in each of the pivots must have a similar kind of values to some column in each of the other pivots, and should share the same name and data type with those columns as well. Columns with the same name will be mapped to each other in the union and become a single column in your final pivot. So you'll want to name your columns in each pivot strategically according to what column you want them to map to in the other pivots. In this example, I have quarter of date and year of date on pivot rows. These have the same data type of date and both represent the time period. I'll name both of these columns simply period to map them to each other in the union. However, I have a product type column in one pivot that is not present in the other pivot. I can solve this by creating a placeholder column in my other pivot with a value of a similar type that indicates that these values on this pivot are not being split by product type. Lastly, the values fields must also have a set of columns that are similar across all pivots. In this example, I have gross profit margin and total revenue. These are both number types and represent my values, so I'll rename this column just values for now. Our next step will make the difference between these fields apparent in the final pivot. You'll know that you've mapped your pivots correctly if you have the same set of columns by the same names in pivot rows, pivot columns, and values across all your component pivots. For our second step, we'll need to create a column on each of our component pivots that acts as a key to divide our final pivot into sections that resemble each component pivot. We'll call this our key column. On each component pivot, you'll add a new column in your values field. Give each of these columns a formula of a single distinct string for each pivot, preferably that describes the kind of values from that pivot. In this example, I'll create a new column on my sales revenue pivot with a value of sales revenue. And I'll create a new column on my gross profit pivot with a value of gross profit. 
Then give these columns a single consistent name across each of your pivots that describes the difference between the values in them. I'll name these columns metric to show that this column distinguishes between the different types of metrics across pivots. For our third step, we'll union our component pivots together as the source for our final combined pivot table. If you've done the previous steps correctly, this step should be fairly easy. Click Add Element, select Pivot Table, select New to use a new source for this workbook, select a union as that source. For the first component of your union, go to Page Elements and select your first component pivot table. Make sure the grouping setting here is set to the option just above all source columns. Click Select, and you've added your first component pivot to this union. Now click the plus by sources to add the rest of your component pivots. Fortunately, Sigma will suggest columns of the same name be mapped to each other in the union, so our work of naming similar columns in our previous step should ensure that our union is configured correctly. But you can use this step as an opportunity to check your work. Lastly, click Done. We'll configure our final pivot in the same way as all of our component pivots, with the exception of the placement of our key column. First, add the same columns to your pivot row and pivot column fields as you have on those fields in your component pivots. I'll add product type and period to pivot rows. And store region to pivot columns. Next, add your key column to either pivot rows or pivot columns, specifically to whichever of those two fields had columns that were similar but not identical across pivots. Make your key column the highest listed column within this field and turn off subtotals for this column. In my example, metrics was my key column, so I've added it to pivot rows. Lastly, add the same columns to your values field as you had on your component pivots. By default, Sigma will add a sum to your values column here. But because of our grouping setting selection in the union, this is actually summing a single value and shouldn't change our values on the pivot at all. However, this sum function will determine how our subtotals on the pivot are calculated. If you would prefer a different subtotal calculation, you can use a different aggregation function in your values function here, or you can just turn off subtotals entirely. If you need your pivot subtotals to be dynamically calculated based on the base formula, that's possible as well, but requires a slightly different approach that I'll cover at the end of this video. For our final step, we just need to apply proper formatting to the pivot. In Sigma, a given column can only have one format at a time by default. However, we can use conditional formatting rules to give our columns different formats according to the values of our key column. You may have noticed that our gross profits aren't currently formatted as percentages as we'd like and that our period for gross profit isn't currently formatted as year as we'd like. We can fix this using conditional formatting rules. I'll create a new rule, apply it to our values column, give it a custom formula, and give it a formula of metric equals gross profit. You can see now that it's applying to our gross profit percentages. I'll set the format to percent and turn off the color styling. We can create such a formatting rule for each part of the pivot that requires it. I'll add one for the period as well.
And with that done, our pivot is complete. Congratulations. As we all know, pivot tables are a critical visualization tool for gathering insights from your data. I hope this video has helped you to take full advantage of this powerful Sigma feature. If you have any thoughts, questions, or suggestions for future how-to series topics, please let us know with a comment below. Thank you for watching, and please join us on the Sigma user community for more video how-tos. Until next time, take care, and happy pivoting.